the yeah perfect now we are live so ivana you were telling me about the serbian alphabet and we got to start with i'm not going to say hello ivana we have already said that <laughs> i've already done that hello to you and and all the listeners and viewers out there <laughs> so now you were discussing that the accents in the serbian alpha the alphabets how they are so from your name you're going to tell me exactly how it has to be pronounced please Yeah, it's an, a neat trait. Um, and as I was saying, yes, the Ser- Serbian alphabet uh, was greatly simplified for the people. So every single word or every single sound that you make is uh, has a way of writing it, and how you write it is how you uh, read it, and how you read it is how you say it. So it's it's very simple uh, for everyone to learn it. Although we have two. two types of alphabet so that's the tricky part but for every sound like ch you have a way to write it and t also another different way so those are the two c's the two c like letters just, in just my, once more, just one just one just one once more the pronunciation for the one with the c like you said with this t and t <laughs> look i tell so you my last name is ninchit and the other second last name is ostle which is the the other funny letter uh with a umlaut the o with a umlaut uh which is german um and it's the same the same letter that austria in germany in german language starts so osterreich um yeah <laughs> but look so hindi is the same hindi also the way we write it is about how we pronounce it so it's a simple language in terms of if you just know the letters the the pronunciation and the ch and the we don't have ch i think we only have ch i don't know the you said ninja. really okay wow that's yeah so it's that, so that, interesting that, always to hear to see parallels um yeah. in in different languages yeah and maybe find out that somewhere now somewhere the root comes from either we got the root from there or you got the root from us because sanskrit is supposed to be the root of these languages also so a lot of them so maybe yeah 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 absolutely i mean yeah uh the 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 world has been international for longer than we can fathom right exactly, exactly. Uh, even without zoom there was much exchange so i'll tell you very interesting <laughs> there's a word throughout the centuries oh there is a word kitab kitab is a word you will you can check it kitab is in hindi okay mm-hmm. in here it's a, you get it in of course in middle east you get it in north africa you go down mm-hmm. to southeast asia it's, it's book kitab is book Okay. So that that word is used. I saw this in South America also. It's used there yeah. also. So that wow. word has some. Of course, there is some people have taken it. It's not that suddenly everyone decided this is going to be called kitab. So that much movement has happened over. Yeah, many, many absolutely, years. absolutely. And I think especially when it comes to food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, interesting thing was that uh, in the symposium there was someone from New Zealand. So he was talking about the Maoris, and they used a word. which is a word that we use and imagine would they have been exposed how did they get exposed how did we pick up the same or have the same word mm-hmm. so i think that by itself is an interesting thing to go into the roots and where it's amazing yeah absolutely um for example my my husband's dialect which is a form of german um it's not the hochdeutsch the usual german that you would here or in germany or um learn um so they for potato say grumpir and we in serbian say krompir um and but actually potatoes which is it it's really quite similar um potatoes have originated from south america right um and the same more or less the same people who who uh were in austria in germany uh from serbia uh practically picked up this this way of calling a potato and then brought it to serbia so um and and they were there to learn something else not to learn <laughs> to to learn about food but they transplanted also also um new new um new words into the language not yeah. not exclusively in their field of expertise sure. and that's a good way of actually seeing the root of the way food moves like you said but interesting let me tell you about connected to this I had this one session in the symposium with with Shadia from Indonesia. She says food makes a difference in terms of how people look at disputes and how they resolve disputes. Spicy food, people who eat spicy food have a different way of going about it. Another interesting <laughs> thing she talks about where they live. If they live next to us the sea or the river, they have a different approach to 
the disputes. And if you live in the hills, her theory is that because when you're next to the sea, you interact with a lot of people. So you look at things very differently. And as you move into the hills, you're kind of isolated. So you start looking at people and circumstances differently. So I'm, mm -hmm. I, of course, she said, look, this is based on my experience, but this should be interesting research. So she's, her session was very interesting. If you can get time, watch that. Session, speaker number 96. That's, that's how people are going to be referred to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure she's more than a number. <laughs> now, now everyone's become a number. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I refuse to be just a number. Uh, <laughs> you have to be in the symposium first. Then... <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. No, but... Uh, no, no, my, be... no, seriously, you should actually record your session there. You should. Because I'm telling you, this is out there. This is a collection which will be useful for people over time. Because look, people watch it. No one, no. I mean, it's going to take time when people get to know. Because no one, like I said, shares my post. No one, even the speakers don't share each other's sessions. But as we go along, people will get to know, and it'll be a good resource to have. I look at it as a resource, a global resource. From I mean, what interesting kind of things that people have come up, come up with. So I think you should do that. We'll do that. We'll talk about that separately. Okay, that we can do. But but this her thing of now another thing of Asian model of mediation is what we have to develop. So all that we are talking to. I mean, we develop that. Do doing that. So those things come out from this has come out from the symposium. But of course, we are here for the experience, mediated mm -hmm. experiences, and your experience as a Jams fellow. But you want me to just talk about why this has happened? Is because. I just, Migle was, Migle was on in conversation with a beautiful mind and she mentioned that she was a fellow, which I, of mm -hmm. course, did not know about this fellowship. And then I saw the post and I said, interesting, look at the names there. I know these people, so many of them. So mm -hmm. why not get them to talk about the experience so that people who want to apply, so they can, at least one is, of course, they apply or don't apply. Just the fact that there are people out there who have gone about thinking about what they want to do in mediation. Mm -hmm. They've got some plans. What kind of plans did they have? What they learned and how they implemented it in their country, how things changed for them as they went along. So I found that to be interesting. So Ivana is here and now you're going to tell us about yourself and take us through your experience. I've said what I had to say. Maybe at some point of time, you will let me go through what I that I showed you that slideshow on the November thing. At some point, let me do that because I like to tell people because no one, like I said, watches, put sees my posts. So Ivana, I've said what I had to say. Now it's yours, all yours. Well, I look forward to again reading, uh, reading uh, about and seeing um, the reviews from the from the school that you showed me. That okay. was beautiful. I shall. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, my name is Ivana. I'm uh, I'm a Serbian lawyer um, and accredited mediator by the Ministry of Justice of the Re Republic of Serbia. And um, back in 2017. Um, I, I was a, a JAMS fellow, um, Weinstein JAMS International Fellow, to be more precise. Um, my journey uh, in ADR, um, I would say, started when I was just very, very small, but I won't, <laughs> won't expand too much on that. Um, I will... Uh, fast forward. Uh, to... Oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You have to take us through that. Look, <laughs> no, okay. It's important. It's important. Baby steps, but no. Um, no. So practically after working as a lawyer, legal trainee and a lawyer for several years, um, uh, having, being unsatisfied with, with the system, um, I, I uh, was, I was happy to uh, to stumble upon uh, um, a, a possibility to to join the Ministry of Justice on a public consultancy uh, role um, in our efforts to um, to practically integrate in in within the EU. So to improve our legal system and judicial system so that um, we will reach EU standards. Um, and I saw this as an opportunity because. Um, working in the court system, I saw all the inefficiencies. I saw uh, that people are just not being served justice. Um, and, and I saw, saw that also with um, a dispute that unfortunately my parents also had that was very, very close to home. Um, and I, 
in working with the ministry initially, I, I wasn't tasked at all, at all on uh, mediation related matters because actually that wasn't a priority at all. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, bit by bit, um, because my, my role was um, improving, uh, enhancing of judicial professions, I uh, started through the years from 2013 um, uh, to, to make uh, first uh, my colleagues in the ministry more and more aware of the fact that mediators uh, should definitely have their place right along with lawyers, notaries, and other legal uh, professions, um, and, and that we should have more mediation uh, related um, events and me mediation um, system design has to be implemented. Um, and in this journey, um, I was, uh, it wasn't just a job for me. I really, I really uh, took it to heart uh, because I, I wanted to make a change. Um, and on this journey, um, one of the first uh, practically uh, to become a mediator in Serbia, I passed, I, I went through uh, basic mediation training. Um, and one of the first people I listened to was Blažo Nedić, um, an uh, IMI accredited mediator and also former Jams um, Weinstein International Fellow. And he, uh, during um, his presentations, kept on referring uh, to his experience at um, during the fellowship and to uh, the way that uh, that mediation is practiced within jams but not just that also to the way practically the, that the mediation uh, system um, design has involved within the US um, so I got more and more curious about this um, and and um, uh, my research uh, practically uh, uh, was expanded uh, quite a lot at that point. Um, and I started to think, well, maybe I'm I'm well placed to become a future gems fellow. Uh, <laughs> um, talking to some some people, then I, I was uh, quite actually discouraged because they said, oh, but um, you know, uh, there's. Serbia is a small country, there shouldn't be two JAMS fellows. Um, and that's why one of the reasons I really wanted to come on uh, uh, and talk to you and talk to all your, uh, your audience to be aware that actually when there is a good project, there is no geographic um, uh, limitation. Um, so yes, um, I mean, my project was quite, um, I would say, uh, different than, than my colleagues uh, from, from my country because he came from the private sector and I was really trying to do something um, a little different uh, to improve mediation from within the system. Um, so I had already had several practically, um, you know, a track record of, um, of, uh, of legislative changes as well as, um, as uh, garnering the Supreme Court of Cassation and the Ministry of Justice and the High Judicial Council um, to sit together and, and draft guidelines on improving of the use of mediation. Um, and in, um, during, during my, my time at, in the US, um, my idea was to, to see how we can um, get more knowledge on, on what works, what doesn't, so that we can make a, a Serbian flavor, a Serbian style of mediation system design that is um, institutional and, and that fits, fits, fits within our, our judicial and uh, legal system. Um, so, uh, Practically, I mean, every uh, I think what what needs to be said from said from the outset is that every um, every uh, Jams uh, Weinstein um, International Fellowship is uh, at the start a blank slate. There is no rules um, that are set by the by the fellowship, but practically it is what what you make of it, and that is the beauty of it: the flexibility and creativity, which is practically inherent in mediation uh, and mediation system design. Um, and my idea was uh, to 
garner more and more skills, garner more knowledge, so that the the processes and and the and the projects that I have already started uh, to develop within Serbia uh, can be better implemented. And I do believe that I have um, I have been successful um, on that journey, although it is um, quite. Uh, a continued <laughs> uh, effort and it, it doesn't stop uh, you know once you come back from the from the time you you have spent in in the US it actually starts then and um, you know some days or some some months you can be more or less encouraged but you're always practically um, infused with this knowledge and strength energy uh, that that both uh, the colleagues from JAMS, um, you know, as headed especially by, by Judge Danny Weinstein, um, but also the, the cohort, so all the other fellows which um, they, they bring um, uh, together, um, practically uh, they are the, the, the little voices in, inside your head <laughs> that practically um, allow you to and, and give you strength to move forward whenever you um, you might hit um, you know a, a, a deadlock or or some some uh, barrier along the way and of course we all do both um, in in our in mediations that we we carry out but also in trying to to change any system um, so should I speak a little um, more about what, what we actually did during the yeah. fellowship? But before that, first of all, I was calling you Ivana, but it's not Ivana. That's what you, that pronunciation was also wrong. So you have, you, your name is not pronounced like that, like you just said. But, Ivana. But you, yeah, Ivana. <laughs> but you want to tell us a little bit about yourself first before that? Right. Because we know where, where you are now and we know how it moved. So something, that introduction also. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So um, <laughs> uh, I am um, I'm a, a Serbian slash Canadian uh, living in Austria, <laughs> uh, now working for the International Mediation Institute um, as uh, the new executive director. Um, I uh, have taken uh, the role over from uh, uh, Laura Skillen, who has fantastically conducted it um, over the past uh, few years. And now I'm just getting um, uh, adjusted to this new environment uh, that is um, that I have practically uh, learned also during the fellowship, but also uh, have been very acutely aware of um, working within the ministry um, uh, over the years, trying to improve uh, the, the mediation uh, standards within my country. Um, I am a mother, I, <laughs> I am a ski lover, um, and um, actually a lover of all sports, and I'm a, a lover of a good conversation. <laughs> Very nice. That's what we want. But the thing is that that part that you had written on your, which was earlier on the IMI website, now you've updated that. But that portion that you had said, I am so much, so, so and so by training, so and so by that. I want that paragraph. Is that available somewhere? <laughs> that was really <laughs> no, nice. So, no, that was a little, um, perhaps even an internal joke. Um, uh, yes, I mean, I am, uh, I have been trained and educated in law in Serbia, in my hometown of Belgrade. Uh, however, most of my education spans from um, Canada, and I would say also my upbringing. Um, and uh, therefore, that anecdote of being Canadian in manners, because we're considered to be sometimes too polite. Um, <laughs> and we um, often finish uh, sentences with a question mark, uh, uh, which is uh, generally assumed to be, um, you know, asking of uh, approval. So that's something how a society actually uh, influences uh, one, one's behavior, right? Um, or how one, one is perceived. Um, and uh, I, I often joke about that because um, in Serbia, um, that maybe internationally when I talk, especially in English, that is not so clear, but um, um, in, in Serbia, when I talk in Serbian, that, that comes across quite, quite strongly. And um, I would say that um, that is one of my um, 
uh, uh, jokers, let's say, um, or, uh, or positive aspects uh, that I bring to the mediation table too. You shouldn't have removed that. It was really nice. I think you put it back onto the new profile that you put. <laughs> You know, and, and it ends with um, yeah. international inaspiration. Yes. And um, it is truly that. Um, I, I aspire to, to work, um, to, to do mediations internationally. And uh, I, uh, over the last years, um, have, um, to some extent, um, formed an international career in consultancy. But uh, this new... Uh, New engagement uh, uh, with IMI is is um, is certainly a, a huge leap in that direction, and I am uh, thrilled to be communicating with with uh, people from countries all over the world um, and and learning from them and learning with them how we can improve mediation together. So congratulations! And Thank you. A lot of it's a responsible position. Lots of things to be done in the world and. Yes. at every point of time i mean we will keep saying mediation is the future of dispute resolution but i don't know how long we've been saying that <laughs> so i keep saying when i in my post i said it's the future of dispute resolution and the future is here that's what i say <laughs> yeah so that's how it is so from here yes. i mean okay so I'd, I'd cut you off there now you were talking about your experience again i won't come in i will of course get tempted to but i won't <laughs> so you can take <laughs> us forward <laughs> so by way of background, um, I mean, mediation in Serbia, um, as it is taught in basic training, it's um, actually, you can, it can be called facilitative medi mediation. Um, we, during the basic training course, we don't even learn um, that, that there is such a thing as a mediator's proposal. Uh, so you can imagine um, what uh, a world I uncovered coming to the US. Um, and and having the opportunity to to shadow uh, some of the most prominent mediators, um, and many of them are former um, lawyers, such as Bruce Edwards, um, but uh, many of them are um, former judges, um, and uh, so this perhaps you know they say um, evaluative mediation. Um, oh, some call it also authoritative mediation as a, a different new flavor. But um, um, yes, I uncovered a whole uh, wide array of new tools that uh, I can use um, in, in my future efforts. And also I became aware as, um, as somebody who is advising the legislator um, on, on, how, on how to formulate uh, um, the mediation legislation on how we have to be mindful um, of the language we use in laws so that we don't hamper um, and limit the tools that mediators use. Um, that is my, one of my uh, big takeaways uh, from, from this experience. Um, and, and I have tried um, in, in, in drafting of the new um, draft mediation law to, to practically implement this, um, th these takeaways. Um, the mediation, uh, exp uh, the experience of the fellowship um, for me was formative, uh, not just because of, um, of, of shadowing the mediators, uh, but that, that is certainly the most um, <laughs> exciting was the most exciting part of it because I got to see you know the magic happen on on field um, for me it was uh, very interesting to see how also um, well-established um, you know luminaries in the field are uh, sitting um, at the table with us and listening to their colleagues and being um, you know, enlightened themselves uh, and uh, inspired and and eager to learn more from their peers and also from us who are <laughs> much more junior to them. Um, so this um, attitude of of continuous learning and and um, generally um, seeking of of ways to do it better. Um, is really uh, something that was that I was struck with because um, in many places I would say in the legal field you know there's so many people who who say oh 
you know, the way I do it, uh, I am, you know, there's no higher than myself. Um, and there's no need to, to learn more or, or do it any differently because I do it best. Um, it most past plastically um, explained is like when, for example, some of my colleagues say, well, we, why should we um, do additional mediation training? Why should there be mediation as a process? We do mediation every day when we um, cooperate, when we negotiate with, um, with the other the lawyer of the other client. Um, and that just ex shows very plastically how, um, you know, unaware they are of, of the, the whole wide rainbow um, of, of tools and, and um, benefits that um, process design can, can bring into the room um, on the negotiating table. Um, yeah, so, that 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 is definitely of a huge takeaway, and also the energy, the energy that that the fellows garner, um, and and also being inspired and and learning from from them, because every cohort is around 10, 15 um, really exceptional individuals from across the world, and everyone is doing something different um, and something that you can learn from. And but you have to take us through those people also. That whole list of people, you have to take us through those, what kind of work they're doing and what they did after that, if you can. Yes, of course. Um, I'll, I'll open the list out. I'll open the list out whenever you tell me. I'll open the list out. So, yes, I mean, we have um, amazing, I mean, judges like Etienne Martin from, from um, Brazil um, doing amazing work there. We have um, uh, private mediators who have established their own mediation practice and um, are uh, are seeking really um, to to implement this, let's call it Western or a jam style um, a model of uh, mediation in Europe. Um, such as Pirita Virtanen from Finland. Um, uh, we have uh, a mediator, a lawyer mediator from, um, from Turkey, um, uh, Tuba Bilcek, who, who is also a great example of somebody who the fellowship has inspired to, to continue the learning process. And she, um, after the fellowship, um, also enrolled in... Um, um, in a law school, in an um, ADR uh, program um, um, in LA, um, and practically is now mediating full time, um, both uh, um, in the US um, and abroad, um, thanks to the incremental steps that she took um, before, during, and after the, the uh, uh, mediation. Um, fellowship um, practically to to be where she has, she is not where she is at now so that's Tuba Bilcek um, we have yes uh, of course Ivan or Machia from uh, Peru uh, a, a fabulous individual also I mean they're all fabulous individuals to talk to um, uh, who uh, is doing community uh, mediation I mean in Peru there's um practically a lot of um, environmental cases um, and major environmental cases uh, um, that are that uh, are being facilitated. Um, and uh, this is, um, um, you know, process design between practically um, enterprises, international companies and communities living um, in, in far off uh, places. If I, could come, um, if I can come in, I'll just come in on that. There is Luis Ore who had come, who's come on my in conversation, in conversation with the beautiful mind also in the symposium also. He was mm -hmm. in the prime minister's office and they were actually doing that and actually going to communities, like you said, far off places. He said yeah. the only way to get there was in a small aircraft. So they had to go in that. And then, and the interesting thing that they did was like a hybrid model. So the government officials are there on screen and these the whole community is there, maybe in a stadium. And the way they were doing that, I mean, I found it really interesting that they're actually doing that kind of work. So it's all happening. It's all happening and it's on record. If someone wants to watch it, it's there on my on the channel also. So I, I really like what he's doing. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. I might have to come in sometimes, but please. No, it's okay. Um, so... 
<laughs> listening to Ivan speak, um, it was almost like listening to William Uri. <laughs> you know, he has a lot of these stories um, about uh, how um, he met, he was facilitating negotiations um, in in uh, South America. So I I almost felt like uh, I, I I was speaking to to a new William Uri uh, in in um, in the making. Let's say, um, yeah, I. Uh, we have, um, you know, it's not just practitioners that apply and, and get accepted to the fellowships. It's um, also amazing academics like um, um, uh, uh, Lei Chao or Sally, who, um, who is from China and um, has uh, pr practically was in Stanford um, during, I think, most of the fellowship and um, was um, practically doing... Um, doing very practical aspects of research that are, you know, uh, applicable also in practice. Um, and since then, I was also communicating with her about the Belt Road Initiative. Um, Serbia is one of the countries within this in initiative, got a, uh, a questionnaire from, from the government of China to, to fill out. So we had an opportunity to, <laughs> to, to work also um, after the fellowship. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, we have amazing fellows from India, um, uh, Chitra Narayan, I think he spoke to her. So I don't, I don't have to. Um, oh, no, she's still, she hasn't recorded her session yet. That has to, okay, has to happen. So, so yeah, but I'm very much looking forward to the conversation you will be having with her. Um, and, uh, and yes, she's a, a lawyer turned mediator and she, she published an amazing, I think, uh, a book about mediation. Um, and uh, one of the first fellows actually uh, uh, to be uh, selected was um, Leila um, Laila Olapati uh, from India, uh, founder of Camp Mediation and Arbitration. Um, and um, of course, I mean she was she's instrumental um, in in um, in setting up mediation and and um, and and improving the mediation climate um, in in um, in India. Um, and she is one of the members of the board of IMI. Um, yes, and so, yes, of course, and, and uh, Judge uh, Kenan also, yes, <laughs> also doing incredible work. Um, as, as I understood, he, after the fellowship, he, he, um, he finished his um, judicial career. Um, uh, I'm not, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, I, and, and he was est establishing essentially, uh, um, you you probably know it better than no, me. You know uh, better, you know better. <laughs> <laughs> um, mediation system design with, I think, a, a, a rail, um, was it a railway system um, or some, Big infrastructure a system uh, that that um, that he was trying to find an alternative to 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 resolve their disputes um, and of course uh, Tat uh, Tatlim from from Singapore who um, who is just an incredible uh, <laughs> human being. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, he, uh, how should I say? Yeah, I, I, he is a mediator, mediator at heart and with his whole being. He, uh, he pretty much started off uh, mediation, um, you know, uh, working um, as a volunteer in, in the courts. And he was selected also as, uh, as one of the best volunteers. Um, um, because of his uh, efforts and and enthusiasm to uh, to contribute to to this um, court connected um, mediation system um, and and uh, he he is uh, very much involved also with IMI um, with intercultural
cultural competences task force with uh, international advisory um, uh, committee. Um, and yes, I mean, all of them are, are, are really, really great friends. But let me tell you, Ivana, he was he, on my show, Evolution of a Mediator. So you must watch that. He's, he's spoken about his life, maybe things that you would not know. You can see, mm -hmm. watch that. So he's really gone into his growing up because that Evolution of a Mediator is about everything about how you grew up. And even before that, you're even like the one I started with Bernie Mayer. We did one episode. We haven't even come to him yet. It's about his mother and grandparents and all that. So it's a very, it's like quite an involved kind of thing. So you must watch that. Like you said, he's a wonderful person. So he's obviously come on that show. He's on that symposium. He's even recorded his experience with the, as a Jams fellow. So all that is available. I mean, I really like him. He, there's a lecture series that I've started. He's given a lecture in that also. So mm -hmm. he's always there. I mean, whenever I call him, he's really there. I really like them. Also. Yeah, please. As Alan Bass uh, from the um, Weinstein International Foundation <laughs> says, you know, we don't know when he sleeps because he he is just uh, um, so so industrious and and really always always willing to yeah. to lend an ear and uh, to to yes lend uh, <laughs> lend some time to 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 inspire others well, interestingly what happened was that he had to record his symposium session on a saturday and like i was telling him there is no concept of a saturday for singaporeans he, 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 he would have been working so he was sitting in his office and doing that on a saturday so he like i don't think that he stops working at any point of time <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. he is he is incredible Mm -hmm. And from Azerbaijan, Ruslan. Yes, Ruslan. He um, so <laughs> Ruslan. I feel like uh, a special connection also to him because um, uh, we had to we introduced each other um, during um, the first meeting um, in the headquarters um, of Jams, and that was you know uh, one of the ways one of the ways you can facilitate introductions of people is to get them to get to know each other to have a partner and then practically to present not yourself but the other partner you know the little things that you learn along the way um, from from um, also, like how, how to facilitate, you know, getting um, getting to know somebody else. Um, so also, Ruslan came uh, to the fellowship with his family, which is which was so heartwarming, um, and his little little son. He is um, really one of the go-to people in Azerbaijan. Um, uh, he's not just uh, the, um, a mediator um, and a lawyer. Uh, he is working um, as an expert um, also of the Council of Europe, um, CEPEJ, um, uh, on directly with uh, with judges and the Ministry of Justice on the reform of the law. Um, so practically in Azerbaijan, uh, they, over the last uh, several years, were working on, on introducing this specific, um, let's say, opt-out model of mediation um, that's alike uh, the Italian model, so that um, the courts wouldn't be so burdened by, um, by the incoming cases, but practically that uh, mediators can uh, assist in taking a little of the uh, workload and um, so uh, Ruslan uh, has been instrumental practically from the private sector um, in in establishing this and and um, and helping uh, practically set up um, a viable way uh, of um, of dispute resolution there um, yes and, and he he's um, um, but he's also practically he has his own um, mediation, I think, and also arbitration um, practice, and and he's affiliated also with the with the law school. Um, and, we have to do something about this. Mediator and arbitrator should not be allowed. It should be banned. It should not be able. To. Oh no 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 no! Well, then you have to listen to the uh, mixed mode uh, task force yeah. members uh, talk about ways that. Um, 
uh, you know, mediators and arbitrators might switch hats and um, how these two processes might be combined and what um, are the ethical issues involved and, and what are all the other technical issues that should be considered um, in these processes. No, my, um, no, my thing is, even is the mindset. A mediator mindset is a mediator mindset. And for that mindset to be in any other position, I just don't want them to be in that. They just have to stay as with that mediator mindset at all points of time. Yes, but it's not necessary, um, you know, to lose a mediator mindset, even when one is arbitrating, um, first of all, and also the connections that mediators establish with arbitrators um, and with arbitration centers are highly beneficial in facilitating also uh, dispute resolution without in in arbitration centers. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is okay. That they should do. I mean, in arbitrations, there should be mediations. That, that's perfect. I'm just saying that the fact that that mediator mindset person is put in that position, definitely they can do it. And there are people who are litigators and they are doing their mediators also. In the court system, there are lots of these people. So I, but I just find them and I talk to them. They say, look, we have to do this. We have to do the litigation aspect because mediation definitely does can't pay our, pay our basics because obviously the court system doesn't give them anything. So that is the only thing. I know they're frustrated. It, they tell me, but they can't do anything yeah. about it. So I just want, don't want them to be put in that position. I'm just trying to say that. But it's okay. I'm, I'm... But I, I do understand what, what you're saying, but it is this, you know, comparison. Oh, mediation is like arbitration without teeth, right? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Mediation is a completely different animal. Um, yeah. it, uh, it cannot be uh, compared in that way. Um, and I love the definition I heard last week uh, from um, Federico Antic, who, of course, is an Italian um, and as such has described mediation as an opportunity to... Um, exit a dispute in an elegant way. <laughs> I love that. Um, and so it's, you know, there's always an opportunity to, to make an arbitration elegant as well, not just um, uh, a negotiation or, or a, a court dispute. Yep. So we've covered everyone. We've covered everyone. Oh, we haven't covered uh, Marian Hassan from Somalia um, and uh, so she is a diplomat, well now ex-diplomat, but very much involved um, in um, um, now ISDS. Um, and so she is also someone who is, um, you know, treading um, in the interface between mediation and arbitration um, and, and um, and I'm very much looking forward to the results. I think she, she enrolled now in uh, Vienna in um, PhD program and, and the results of her, of her um, research, further research in this field. But what is the situation with Somalia in terms of mediation? What's, what's happening there? So, Somalia? In Somalia, so I think she came. She came to uh, to to the fellowship as um, more from the arbitration side because the the fellowship is not um, uh, at arbitration. Let's say in diplomacy side, um, uh, and and this is a, a, an explanation and also. Um, um, uh, uh, showcasing how, how diverse um, uh, all the fellows are um, and, and their projects. Um, it, it can be that there is an interface between the various dispute res resolution processes. It's not um, exclusively mediation related, although it is, um, of course, um, the most prominent and, and frequent um, way, way of, uh, of dispute resolution um, within within both the fellows and and um, the, let's say fellowship roster and and jams, um, but yes, I mean she she I think implemented um, you know mediation techniques um, that that we learned during the fellowship um, and and um, was interested to to see really the jams model. Yes. Yeah. Brazil was not covered. 
Etienne? Brazil? Oh no, I, I mentioned uh, Etienne uh, as uh, uh, in the in the first instance. <laughs> okay, the pronunciation of the okay, the name pronunciation. I was the Etienne. You said oh, maybe that didn't strike me. I was not looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Exxon, Exxon from Pakistan. Uh, he uh, he is actually. Um, um, uh, if, if from the let's say police uh, uh, background, so that it's very interesting. You know, um, um, think that it's it's very interesting to have uh, people not just from the you know private um, sector like lawyers. You know, the most the most frequent let's say um, model lawyer becoming mediator. Um, so Exxon is is an excellent example of how somebody from from um, police background um, has um, has been able to to um, has recognized this field as as a, um, a useful one to to uh, develop uh, their their own, the position and and um, and uh, their workplace. Uh, so also uh, an excellent uh, person to talk to. But interestingly, and I don't know about other places in India, Pakistan, the first mediator who lines up on a spot is a policeman. The first thing they try to do is mediate between the parties. So police mediation as a formal structure, yes, needs to be developed, but it's already happening in an informal basis. So that's the first mm -hmm. thing they attempt to do. Whatever be the situation, they try to do that. So that they're already that role they're already playing. It comes naturally to them, I think. But that's why uh, having... I mean, it, it's good when it comes naturally. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that is that is the best case scenario, you know. Um, but uh, you know, with additional um, awareness and you know, through through training, everyone can garner these uh, natural skills that they might have. And even if they they might not come naturally, then they might recognize that they should. Um, work on them um, and recognize situations in in, in which uh, they should act. Um, you know, modify the the way that that they they uh, approach a situation. Yeah. Um, I think that is very um, um, it's crucial in building resilient societies and um, not um, um, yes, you know, um, enabling this. <laughs> <laughs> um, basic framework, um, uh, and and the you know pol policemen are the first uh, um, first Responders. interaction Responders in any yeah. one of us has with the state. Yeah. So of course, um, you know, if they don't have mediation skills, um, what what will our impression of the state be? Yeah, I think that's why I think a lot a lot of conversation now on police mediation is happening, that is developing quite a bit in various parts of the world. So that's yes. a good sign. That's a good sign. But there is um, uh, from Scotland also, and uh, from a previous year, um, a fellow uh, who who um, actually yes developed a, um, a, a recognized uh, police reform uh, project, um, and um, and if that's something that that uh, uh, you're interested to to learn um, of, um, yes, I can I can uh, I, I forget his name, but uh, it was. It, it was a very interesting project. Um, but this, this is person Antonio in Spain. So in there, they actually, done, they've done a lot of work there. They've actually created an app also. So he's doing a lot of work there. So th th interesting things are happening on that front. And there was some conference somewhere in, uh, somewhere in Latin America on police mediation recently. So there is an activity around the world on that. So I think um, in India also, yeah. In India also, I think we need that to happen. So I think it needs to be developed. Yeah. How is restorative justice in India? Nothing much. Nothing much on that. Nothing much on that. No, that needs that. That actually, look, I'm telling you, I keep saying this. There is this whole colonial mindset that we have been conditioned in, and our laws and procedures and the mindset of the courts is functioning around that. So first of all, you have to get out of the colonial mindset to start working on these things. So either the fact of these traditional mediation methods of communities doing it, I was telling you about last time about what James is doing in Kenya, 
and how the Kenya constitution recognizes traditional systems. I was telling about, let me tell you, because okay, I told you then, I'll let me put it on record. So James is in Kenya, and he actually was telling us about this particular case that in a community, a murder took place. And the community finally resolved it that 15 camels will be given to the victim's family. Now, obviously, it is still the penal code is still there. So police went and registered a case. Case goes to the court. No one lands up. No complainer, no witnesses, nothing. So the judge understands. So he sends the police person to the community to find out what they decided. So he said 15 camels. He gave the order based on that. He passed an order. Major criticism. How can you do that? This is a penal code, there's punishment there. So then he looked at the constitution and the constitution recognizes the fact of traditional methods of dispute resolution. So now today in Kenya, that is law. So imagine this, this can happen in various countries. We have to, because every country has that. Every country, there are traditional methods happening there. India has that, certain parts of India, they have that. Now, whether, look, our constitution also mentioned it, mentions it, or I, I'm not getting into it because the way it gets interpreted, I mean, I, for me to say something and how it goes on, because I haven't seen anything happening on that. But there is possibilities of that in various countries that you can actually do it in the, in the existing framework. So it's not even changing that framework. So first yeah. recognizing that aspect of it. So a lot of work, I mean, this is one area which I'm going to be working on. These are things which have come out from the symposium. So various things have come out. So now mm -hmm. the next step is to take all of them separately and get people who are interested to work on them, start putting them together and try to, there's a certain larger vision which we needs to be put together. So start working there. So there are restorative justice, lots of work has to happen there. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a really wonderful story and anecdote. Um, and it just shows, I think, how, you know, it takes exceptional individuals such as that judge to look at the greater picture and not, you know, narrowly legalistically at a matter. Yeah. And the fact that like yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, please, 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 please. And, and I think... Uh, I mean, it, that that was essentially also in in the um, in the outset uh, the idea also uh, of of everyone who came in um, to form jams. You know that they saw the system that was not was not functioning uh, the way that it should have been, um, and they wanted to to make a, a contribution, a change, um, for ha to have their efforts. Um, be recognized in a different way and have and and be more successful um and you know knowing that that <laughs> jams as such exists i think is also uh um something that that all of us can you know strive you know not to achieve what they have but to know that you know, with certain effort and with envision, you are able to create something. Um, if, if you don't look at a system, uh, you, you don't accept a dysfunctioning system as it is, and you don't accept to be just a simple player within it. Yeah. Well, on the, on the aspect of these traditional methods, I was just saying that the idea behind the symposium was to bring this out. The idea, the topic was mediation in our culture and traditions. So I wanted this to come out. There's lots more which has to come out, but at least some mm -hmm. aspects of it have come out. Whether, I mean, I don't know, uh, of course, if you get time, you'll get time to watch those sessions, but there was this one person from Israel, David Shimoni. He has come out with this whole concept of a hybrid model. So a traditional mediator and a modern mediator. Let's, okay, let's just say modern. We have to, of course, define that modern as we go along. But the fact is that on one end, these mediators, traditional mediators are trusted by the communities. And that is a very important aspect of the entire process. And on the other end, there are some processes which, of course, some people might not get a voice in that system or they might be told what to do. Which I've also been saying that, look, they are told what to do. They still have a choice not to do it. But social pressure sometimes is not a bad thing. So that's what I keep saying, that what is the problem when a community wants to stay together and someone wants to accept it? It's their decision. I mean, we should. why should we criticize that decision of theirs? And I think that's the way what has happened in the world is that communities are not, you don't have communities the way they were. So sense of ownership is gone. If sense of ownership goes, then you become a more litigious society. And then you reach the US situation that 100 million cases are filed in a 300 million population. So we don't, I mean, that extreme to go to, and obviously 
whatever method of dispute resolution happens but there is a lot of lot goes before dispute resolution in that so i think a lot of steps there that he's talking about and that i like that hybrid model concept i won't give you the example now i'll have to i'll ask you to watch that <laughs> no sounds very interesting Yeah, this very yeah yeah very, very very nice work that he he's, mm-hmm. he basically he did research on these Jews who came from the Balkans into Israel and how their dispute resolution was functioning within themselves. So he studied that, asked them, was did the research he did there, and he came out with this. But this is about you, Ivana. Oh yeah, Ivana, Ivana, mm-hmm. Ivana. I get the pronunciation wrong. No, this no. this one is about you. This is not about the symposium. So please. <laughs> well, I'm all about learning uh, and learning more about different mediation di- in different cultures. So. <laughs> I, I, I look. I put ninety-seven uh, sessions out there, so there is enough material for you to watch. <laughs> like I keep saying, who needs Netflix? There is enough on only the symposium, and otherwise, good entertainment. Oh, entertainment, yes, well, it is. Thank you, Vikram, for for um for for your uh, amazing work over the last year and a half. Really, it's yes. I think it'll be um, valued and appreciated. Um, you know, only as people start. to become more and more aware of it yeah. but the good the, the main thing is it's been enjoyable putting it all together each of those things that i've done is a f- certain time i've spent with a wonderful person going through be an evolution of a mediator their story it's so enjoyable to hear about how they went about it what the kinds of experiences they had like ken cloak talking about him growing up on a chicken mm-hmm. ranch or a ranch where he's selling chicken and eggs to that and then you civil rights movement and everything what all a person goes through that's i mean the whole process of mm-hmm. becoming reaching that point like he keeps saying you don't become a mediator you are you have that natural ability and you evolve so mm-hmm. that the in conversation the beautiful mind everything it's been really enjoyable so that way it's been good but today is your experiences please so then although you also have to take us basics some people would want to know how the whole process starts how you you've thought about it now you have to apply what all you have to put together including mm-hmm. recommendations which i was talking to someone about this and that concept of how does a person who's not connected in the international sphere get a recommendation at the international sphere how do how does that chicken and the egg situation break so no please. an international recommendation is not necessary what you need to show is that um you can contribute to the development of mediation um where you come from um if it is um you know practically developing a, a peer uh mediation program within a school system uh, a recommendation from the school principal on your fabulous work uh so far uh would suffice um if it is um you know if you're working in a court um <laughs> then of course uh your superior or the the court president would be the relevant um person to go to um so it's it's really not necessary that that um you have you know uh, a roster of um um recognized international names what is necessary is that uh that you can um show that that you are well positioned to have um the effect um uh, of some change um of some improvement um so and and it really depends on on the on how you design what your idea of the fellowship um experience of the fellowship project both at home and during the 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 stay in the USA um is uh so it it's there is no map for it um i think everyone needs to uh um focus you know find their own compass and um you know even without um let's say um uh, even if they're not sure whether to apply this year for example there's only a few days left um i would say that it is a extremely useful exercise to even start today um and put in the effort for the next 3 4 days um to really um talk have a conversation with yourself what is it that you would want to do if somebody <laughs> from somewhere across the world would uh give you the funds for it um and that is the amazing thing practically you know how often um do you have a chance to to practically develop 
an idea of your own, um, uh, put it in practice um, and have it funded. Um, so of course, um, part of the funds will certainly go to, um, to, to, to your stay in, in um, one of the JAMS offices, um, shadowing the mediators, um, but um, everything else oof, is completely, um, as they say, tabula rasa, like blank slate. You can, you can uh, design it for yourself. And even if this year the project is not accepted, um, you know, you might, have time to think about it for the following year and uh, improve it. And maybe even if it's not in the end, um, you know, something that that uh, is followed through, um, you will actually through this exercise of thinking, OK, what would I do if somebody was to to give me this um, uh, opportunity practically um, come to to this idea with yourself, um, what you really want to do? Um, and, and this way, and that, yeah, yeah, you get your own thoughts together. At least what you want to do doesn't matter the fellowship comes through or not. At least you know your road map, road, road map a little better, maybe. Exactly, exactly. Helping yourself um, on 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 this pathway. Um, and in my experience, you know, even um, you know what whatever incremental steps um, uh, you take, um, even. Even if something at, at some point doesn't render, it isn't successful, or or you don't see this the effect that you wanted to have, um, you know the all the pieces at some point do fall together, and then you realize yes, okay, the effort that I put in um, to you know this activity actually paid off later on, and I learned something from it. Um, um, but. I highlight again the amazing part about the fellowship is that, um, you know, uh, there is no roadmap, and and you are the one to create it. No, but I, I was talking about this aspect about recommendations was because I was speaking to Liliana. She's in Argentina, and I felt she comes from a small town, which is about hundred thousand people, and she has good thoughts. It she was like she's working with the city council, but taken one year off only because she wants to pursue her dream to do something in mediation. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, and has good thoughts in terms of how the citizen is treated in the system and how to change all that. So I felt that was a good place to actually experiment because 100,000 people, you can maybe look at systems and do it easy, more easily than a country, a city like ours, which is 25 million. So mm -hmm. a big, I mean, I thought that was a good experiment that she could do and had those things. But then the kind of, it's like a person gets kind of discouraged when they hear about this whole international thing that you have to be looking at some international recommendation. I was just speaking to her just before you came in about this and, and I, I said, it doesn't matter. I mean, finally, you just put your application through. Well, good. What you have said will motivate her. I'm sure she'll listen to this and I'll tell her to listen to this because I think this is what they need. There's so many people out there who must be just thinking, getting overawed. Oh, Jams International Fellowship. Oh, where do I fit in? No, you have, please motivate her a little more and more people like that who are sitting there thinking that they don't fit into the international scene. You might have a thought which is good in the global at the global mm -hmm. level. So please motivate her and other people like that. Please. Well, that, that is precisely why, why I uh, wanted to, to talk today, because um, it's, it, it really boils down to, you know, what you carry inside of you and, and then what, what you can put on the paper. Um, it really, like, no frills, no, no gimmicks. Um, and what, what um, can be of help is, um, you know, um, for example, looking... Um, um, you know, at, at the financials, uh, the particulars of it, of a stay in, in the US, of course, uh, you know, now with this, um, uh, the pandemic situation, the last cohort uh, didn't um, even have a chance to, to travel to the US. Um, so I guess the next, um, the next fellows might um, practically join the previous ones. Um, uh, I, other than um, 
practically, you know, you have to know what program you want. Um, if you want to improve your knowledge on mediation, whether it's um, you know, Strauss or Harvard or some community-based um, um, institute, um, you know, ADR, um, uh, ADR court, court design um, uh, um, systems of the uh, UC Hastings program offers a great um, international um, course uh, that, that um, enables um, international students to, to practically um, sit down with, uh, with practitioners um, and see how they can, um, you know, um, practically make um, design um, court connected mediation systems in their own countries, what considerations they should have. So that's also available as a resource, but you know, half of the, um, the project um, is mapping out what you will be doing in the US. And then half of, the, of, of it is practically mapping out what you will be doing um, once you come back home. Um, and, and one needs to, of course, show um, why are they uh, so well positioned practically to, to do that. Um, but yeah, if, if anybody uh, <laughs> um, has any questions, I, I, I uh, stand at their disposal um, through the IMI contact, um, imimediation.org. Um, they can find my profile and, and, um, and send me any particular in questions that they're interested in. Yeah, they can find your updated profile, which you want to change. And that's, yes. a, that's, that's that sentence. Those sentences have to go there. Thank, actually you. Really Thank you nice. for the prompt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> those were nice things to put. It gives a little nice flavor to the entire profile. <laughs> so, okay. So that part of it, putting an application through anything more that you want to tell people about that and anything else on the application part of it? Um, I think um, it, it's important to to uh, explain what the mediation scene is um, is within your country, and especially um, you know uh, if if there is a fellow from from your country, maybe to reach out to them to to see um, how you can establish collaboration and or how your fellowship fits into to their previous experience and and their continued experience. Um, of course, if um, if you are uh, from a country that that doesn't have yet. Um, um, a fellow, then, then you you do have sort of an advantage. Uh, but um, I think the collaboration between the fellows is also very much um, uh, favored, um, and especially you know when it comes to different um, um, sectors and uh, different areas um, of mediation. Um, then working together, um, that is. Um, that is also something I think that that the, the application committee um, looks favorably on. Um, so yeah, to have do your research, I would say you know do do a <laughs> due diligence. Um, and and if you haven't reached out to the previous fellows, um, um, you know do um, and um, and see how how you can work together. Tell me all these things that go up is always on paper. You can't make videos and send it. That you put your plan in, or to just make a video of it. Do they do that? Do people do that? It's all. As far as I I know, uh, the the application Something. process is uh, the same as it used to be, um, and and it, it requires a, a written application. Uh, of clear. course, there's an interview process afterwards, um, and that's when when you will put your best face forward and and explain, um, you know. Um, between the lines, everything that exists um, uh, outside of the uh, outside of the application that I'm you just thinking, yeah, I'm just thinking it should be like one promo video, basic, very quick. And if they want to see it, another video of your detailed plan, if they want to see it, it's just a link sent. Mm -hmm. I think a person can, when you're listening to a person, you can actually see the conviction behind it and the thought behind it, the intention, maybe sometimes even the intention behind it. I think the video should be the way that you should be forward on these things. Well, I will relay that uh, suggestion yes. to the to the foundation, but um, I, I would say yes. I mean, uh, it would probably change the 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 uh, candidates, uh, or not the candidates, but the the 
fine, finally selected ones because, um, you know, for example, my written word is much stronger than, than uh, my uh, oral <laughs> verbal presence. Uh, so I feel that that is my strength, uh, putting words to paper as opposed to, you know, uh, five minute elevator pitch, whereas somebody else actually might be a better uh, a candidate in that sense. So um, yeah, it would probably um, change change who who would uh, have a better imp leave a better impression on the yeah, on the. That's coffee. interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting point you make because mm -hmm. you have you like the paper thing. You want to put it down, and you like you said you come out stronger there. And yeah. so what, so those people who are not so strong there, they might, I mean, in a way, get left, can get left out on that part. So that's interesting. So you can, it can be a choice, whatever you want to, however you are more comfortable, do it. Could be an audio recording, could be a video recording, put it on paper, whatever. I think these choices, it's interesting. Okay, that's an interesting point. Because I'll, I'll tell you why I was asking this, maybe. I'll, I'll, maybe at the end, I'll tell you. Because I have, after seeing all this and thinking the concept of a fellowship, I said, there's so many people out there who want to do such good things. I am going to create some way of there's some funding for these people to do the work that they're doing. I won't, like I said earlier, said, I'm not going to call it fellowship because of the gender aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I want to use a word which is more gender neutral. But I'm thinking of that because I really realize that there's so many people sitting there who have such good thoughts and good intentions. Everything is there, but might get lost out. I mean, this is not just one thing. I mean, otherwise, general also, for that, for that whole thought to come out and to reach somewhere and to, because problem is that people only acting as mediators and earning a livelihood out of it that is becoming difficult for people so mm -hmm. to expect them to do larger things which there is an expectation that mediators should be doing larger things like Ken Cloak's concept of the role of mediators in social problem solving and I told him also the same thing that first we have to fill their stomachs then we can expect them to do the larger good in society but that so that is why I think we'll have to work something. I'm, work, I'm looking at that, but this, that's the interesting thing that came out for me from this whole, all these conversations and the fact of the fellowship. I getting to know about it. That this is an area which I need to do something. Yeah, I think I mean you point out a beautiful thing. Um, uh, yes. Until recently, I always thought you know, um, if I uh, am seen to you know be a to donate to something, to some cause, or, um, you know, to do some good, um, uh, I would be in, in essence, um, you know, advertising myself, and I, I, I never liked to do that. So if I would ever um, you do anything philanthropic or any good deed, I would really try to somehow hide it, because I felt like it's it was not nice advertising. But then I, I uh, walk, we we'll walk in the woods this summer uh, when uh, for two days I was with my um, husband and son um, uh, walking through uh, mountains in, in uh, Serbia um, and commenting how um, there's so many people on this mountain and it has become so polluted as opposed to 10 years ago and there's um, garbage all over the place. Um, and we really spent two days being negative about it. Um, and then we saw a mother and a daughter uh, one early morning who had um, uh, garbage bags and sticks and they were going around and, and uh, picking up this garbage. And we first weren't sure whether there's some workers or, <laughs> or what, but, and we started talking to them and realized that they actually um, also come there um, to vacation and they just also don't like to have the dirt um, and the garbage, but actually they did something different than we did. Um, they reacted positively to it and, and uh, picked up this garbage. So the next day, uh, my husband and I, <laughs> him with our baby on his, on the baby carrier, um, were also picking up garbage. Um, and I think uh, a beautiful part about this fellowship is that, um, you know, we see uh, Judge Danny, we see Jams, uh, we see all the other fellows do amazing work. And we are also encouraged to continue to try to do amazing work and to hear you also um, uh, you know, uh, make this this symposium and and all the all the series of events that you're organizing um, 
you know, it's also very inspiring. And it, it's really, um, it's beautiful to hear that that also the fellowship that, that has been created um, by them also are, um, is being in essence, in a form replicated um, and will be replicated in, in some way. So there's a ripple effect. Um, I think that's beautiful. And, and I really want to see again, um, those comments. Yeah, oh, yes. Of those. Yes, yeah, that needs to be seen. Give me a second. But that not if you've said that, now you also have to see my all the events part of it also for November events. That is going to come up after this. But this is what happens. So you go to a school in Nigeria, I mean, in, in our way. So grade four. So these are the comments which came in. Last time you read all of them, I didn't let you read the whole thing. No, I love the, the Tadana comment. Yeah, exactly. The mediators are lawyers that go on both sides and they stop arguments. They do not vote for only one person. They vote for everyone. <laughs> I like what mediators do. I want to try to become like a mediator. I feel good I, about mediators. I feel good about mediators not only voting for a person, they vote for everyone and stop arguments. That I think I feel good. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That is the gist of it. You know, it's um, how do you feel at the end of the day? Do you feel that you have done good? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, working on bettering ourselves, bettering our communication skills, bettering um, our, you know, the way that we interact with others, um, it's, it all, it all fits in and, and is part of the picture. Um, and, you know, trying to to build better relationships and end to mend relationships that that is what mediation is for me yeah yeah absolutely and the good thing is that this is what i've been always been saying that you have these people who are out there who have the mediator mindset they're already doing it i mean this person of course we, i was talking to about them but they're already there children doing it we just have to bring them in that's what i'm and i'm look i'm kind of going against that i've been talking about training that word I have to use, I'm good, I use the word skill development because I say that skill is already there. We just develop that skill because we don't have to train them because they already have that skill. So a little bit of a usage of the word, which I'm mm. kind of wanting to change. But now I told you, you started this. Now you have to see the other one also, the November things. And you've already seen them, but yes, you'll have to see them again. I hope you're okay with that. Yes. Even I have to say that. Yes, I'm okay with it. Okay, well, good, good. I nodded my head. You don't really have an option, but okay, I still have to ask you. <laughs> okay, so this starts with this always because, okay, this is, says 80 plus, now they're 90 plus. That's a different thing, but this is designed by Rafael from Mexico on the original poster of, media, of Woodstock. I loved it. I really loved it, the way he put it across. Because the thing is that Sukram, Simranjit Singh in the closing address, said that we have to make mediation cool that's what because look he was he was looking at he said look at the number of views we get nothing if you look at all the website all the youtube channels be it the organizations which have been there for 25 years also the kind of views is nothing and he says it was one song gets some million views so we have to be able to promote but then like i was telling you last time if people don't share, how do you reach more people? I mean, imagine a hundred speakers, if they share each other's sessions, you have 10,000 shares. Each of them would be connected to maybe a thousand people. So imagine how many people you can reach. So that aspect of it, I don't know why that is not happening. Maybe you have to help me on that. Why is it not happening? Why are people not sharing? Why even are not you never shared any of the posts? Why? I'll ask you that separately. Maybe I won't do it here. I won't embarrass you here. <laughs> okay, so this is done. Adi is done. Okay, this is available. Obviously, lovely Another person. Another amazing, amazing yeah. fellow, yeah. Amazing. He's also been on In Conversation with the Beautiful Mind. That's what I'm trying to say. When I saw the list, I said, these people have already been there. They've already, I've already had this. Okay, so Tat, of course, he's been on the, in Evolution of a Mediator also. Yeah. Judge Shemak's also been on Evolution of a Mediator, but okay. Then Miguel has also been on that. That's where I sort of told you at the conversation of this first time, first time I heard yeah. the, the concept. Mm -hmm. Then we have Kachazina is also recorded lying there. Interesting, Ajwa, to work. It's the mindfulness for lawyers and all that she's looking at. Interesting thoughts. So then we have this person, this person, mm -hmm. recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> and this, she's coming in uh -huh. on, on uh -huh. Friday. Uh -huh. 
only thing is that of course it won't be something available for people who are applying because it's on friday but it, like you said this is not a matter of this year it's just a matter of putting into place for next year you start now exactly so that exactly it's never never too late to get inspired and to think exactly. i mean some projects you know might need really a year to to develop Absolutely. um i i i think i i worked intensively on my on my project i think for a year i i thought about it um you know latently here and there while doing my regular work i would jot down thoughts but um it was it was not it was pretty much you know the last three months uh, and then <laughs> the last long weekend it was great because um um practically yeah similarly to this year um it coincided with um you know with remembrance day armistice day so we had a long weekend the 11th of uh, november um and um and practically i took those three days locked myself up and um you know was given food <laughs> underneath the the door um and and finished you know the sprint but i had developed the the project incrementally um in the previous period so okay so chitra whenever she gets time so now what i've done is on my post i actually put a, i put everyone's name whoever's linkedin profile i could find i put it out there that we should record your experiences so i think as people get back to me i'll keep doing this because we have like i said now we're look, looking at next year because obviously i only got to know about this now so next year but i'll keep putting these experiences out it was not supposed to be immediate experiences was first of all the idea came from doing it for this for the jams thing it came from there but the idea is that memorable experiences that people have so that's going to this series will continue whatever could be anything any memorable experience in relation to mediation not in a mediation not in it doesn't have to be in a mediation only in general mm-hmm. like jams is relation in relation to mediation so that kind of thing so that'll keep mm-hmm. happening so that i think will go on then we have a draft mediation bill which has come out and your experience with the your draft that you are making we should compare notes on that so this discussion i had organized now i'm organizing right. a workshops on wednesday and saturday only to discuss this because obviously it's an important piece of legislation i have my views on it which of course differ are quite different from how it's the bill has come out so let's see how that goes on because for me this is an important area which india needs something which is we already have the best law in the world i keep saying that for some reason people are so confused about it that's why the good thing is the singapore convention is there so at least we have a definition now and it's such a nice definition whatever the name you give it whatever the way you do the process as long as that person doesn't have the authority to impose a decision that's it exactly. here the confusion mediation conciliation this that so those are issues which are coming up okay the lecture series look you are going through this again i know that but please do it for me because i'm telling you people otherwise posts and all this algorithm of facebook and linkedin is a problem they only show it to few people so people don't get to know what's happening and i'm doing this for people to see what's happening mm-hmm. so so this was the whole inspiration behind the series which is what ken said and everyone doesn't have access to these kind of lectures he had an access to it because he was a judge so he sat in a lecture but what about all those people i'm saying that we have to identify who are out there so those are the people i want to reach and this was the lecture series so i've already done the four were in october october so november i had michael michael lang wonderful person i don't know whether you met him or not have you met him no unfortunately okay. not okay so on 20th he what he the, he's majorly into reflective practice reflective practice he has a book and everything so i'll come to that i'll come to that so i'll tell you about that so this is liliana i was telling you about in argentina who I, i was just speaking to and how she this old recommendation and this thing came i said good thoughts just put them out it comes out so she was in conversation and she spoken about her thing is from nigeria okay you don't have okay you can you can see your phone and all i'll take i'll take the people through so i won't point it out to you you can if you want to do something up till then not a problem his interesting story when he look i don't know i should sometimes self praise is not a good thing but one good thing he said in that episode he said in all my life no one has asked me all these questions no one has taken me through that part of my life grand parents mother we are still and like i told you we were discussing how her mother grew up and discrimination that she felt and she had experienced and then of course the nazis and all that aspect of it so that was a nice comment 
I, look, sometimes even a some self praise is okay. Sometimes you can <laughs> say that about yourself. I was really happy. I mean, imagine a senior mediator like that saying that that in all these years of his life, no one has taken him through that aspect of his life. I felt good about it. Wow, that's well, that's a very that's a huge compliment. You know, major compliment. It's on record. I now what I have to do is I have to take out these clips from that and I have to put them separately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gunav, the wonderful person, Malaysia. She's in Malaysia, but I'm not putting countries. I, I, like I said, I don't want to put countries here because mm-hmm. lecturers have to go beyond countries. They're just lecturers, so they don't have to. There's no nationality, but otherwise, I put the flag or whatever of the person, not for lecturers. But I'm still mentioning it. So she's that's on Wednesday. Look, this is the book that he's written, and he's he's known for reflective mm-hmm. practice. So he's made these reflective practice groups all over the world. So mm-hmm. they have these discussions. What I told him was that do you have those discussions in your small meetings in closed meetings? Let's put it out. Let people watch what you do. So on the twentieth, he's called people from his reflective practice groups, and they're going to take us through discussions of the way they have it. So you mm-hmm. must, if you have time, please drop in, and it should be interesting. So he says it's going to be interesting. So it will be interesting. And then that's you- really great. Yeah, that's actually quite. Um... And aligned with with one of my initiatives uh, in Serbia, practically to organize um, reflective practices, um, practice groups within the courts um, for the mediators who who are court appointed mediators so to, yeah. to gather them together with the judges who are um, referring the cases and with uh, mediators outside of the court system um, and to talk about the their difficulties their positive aspects um, I mean yeah essentially that's one of the things that we 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 researched in in the US okay so then you must come there on the 20th meet him he's a lovely person I mean really of course he also says very nice things about me which also I like <laughs> <laughs> so he really says nice thing I mean sometimes I get a little embarrassed the kind of nice things he says, I, I, of course, I love it, but maybe I can say I get embarrassed, but that's a different thing. <laughs> okay, so Kathy, <laughs> but Kathy also interesting person. Like I was telling you, her session in the symposium and art and mediation and talking about all that. So she has interesting thoughts there. But she's already come there. This is her. But this is part three. So she's already come to ICE. Wow. Yeah. So interesting. Then Rafael, who designed the poster, his lecture comes in. And then Andrea comes in, she's also, like I said, part of the reflective practice groups, that group that Michael has. And she's been coming to various events of, of what I do. So nice Wonderful. person. With her, the thing is that she's, she lives in a small village in Ireland. So I think there are about 7,000 populations. So I was generally asking her that in the village, what about your acting as a mediator and how things are? She said, look, I don't do anything. She does family matters. She said, we don't do, I don't do anything in my own village. Because of the fact that, yes, people know everyone and everything mm-hmm. travels around. So that was an interesting thing, which I spoke, told some the, from New Zealand, those Grant Morris from New, New Zealand. I told him this because he's saying we've spent so much money funding the government has done to create community mediation. Why didn't it work? So I said, look, she said this, consider this. So he said, yes, everyone comes from the community. Maybe that's an issue. So maybe you can relook that. So these are kind of cross, I mean, discussions that you can have and see where mm-hmm. issues can, might be. So that was this. This is on the last day of every month. Celebrate the birthdays of mediators. I felt this. Like I keep saying, they're special people. They need to be celebrated. So thank you for putting up with this. You're such a valuable resource, and um, you know your energy is incredible. I think. Okay, these are these are the clips I need. This is what I like. <laughs> Sometimes nice to what there's not nothing wrong with hearing appreciation, isn't it? It's a nice thing. It feels nice. You, you just feel it's doing all this. It's just that's what I do it for in a way that people should. Thank you for putting us all together. My my pleasure. It's been a pleasure doing that. So that so now, in terms of your experiences with the Jams Fellowship, you haven't spoken about your going there, what you did, that aspect of it. Okay, shadowing happened. Some, some learning well, happened there. Yeah, I would like. I mean, I yeah, we could talk for the next hour about the the, the actual cases, um, and and dissect them. I mean, the it's, everyone is um, interest interesting in itself. Um, but I think one case, uh, the last case that I I shadowed, um, almost co-mediated in um, was very interesting uh, because it had 
elements of um, so private mediation, <laughs> you know, within jams, um, uh, but also restorative justice. Um, it was a, a community, or actually neighbor dispute, um, and you would never think that somebody would. Um, would get in a dispute um, over Halloween and Christmas decorations. Um, <laughs> so a lawyer and his partner with um, an elderly uh, woman um, uh, over how they uh, decorate their uh, joint um, uh, space um, in a duplex, essentially. Um, and this uh, dispute actually escalated uh, to, uh, to that extent that uh, one of the parties involved was um, practically summoned uh, to the criminal uh, court, let's say. <laughs> um, and he already had some criminal background. So this was very much not favorable for him um, uh, because of all the tension that was uh, existing in between these two neighbors, actually three neighbors. Um, and of course, on the other side, um, the, the other uh, uh, party involved was um, uh, so uh, distraught by the, 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 the continuous um, you know, um, disagreements with the neighbors that um, she really felt un insecure and, um, and um, you know, uh, almost unwilling to live in her own home anymore. Um, and so it, essentially a dispute that's related to property because, you know, how not only how one arranges their, um, their joint space, but also, um, you know, should a pavement be, um, you know, certain improvements being made in the joint pavement, um, etc. So this is all property issues, and who has the right um, to decide on what kind of improvements um, and what costs. Um, so property, criminal law coming together, um, in gems, most unexpectedly, um, and um, it was really fascinating to see practically um, a, a, a different kind of uh, mediation, one that I wouldn't have um, expected uh, to, to be able to resolve such a case. Um, essentially, shuttle diplomacy mediation. Uh, but um, in the end, you know, when, when a mediator has, has uh, I, I think it comes back to, to this mediator mindset and, and um, you know, having an idea of what you want to, to achieve, um, you know, asking the right questions, um, uh, probing, you know, giving the party space to, to think about, um, uh, you know, their life situation also, and also the legal situation that they find themselves in and might even further down the road find themselves in. Um, it was, yes, it was very enlightening to, to um, experience practically this um, cathartic um, reaction of the parties, uh, each one in, in their, their own selves, um, um, who in the end managed to to come to an agreement and and um, res, you know to resolve their property relationships so that also their neighborly relationships would be um, kept um, you know if not in harmony then in in order so that um, you know peace can be restored and more um, damage not not. Um, erected. Um, I, 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 I thought that was very interesting because um, in Serbia, um, I think in, in many jurisdictions, such a case would not have come to a private mediation. Um, and it just shows that, that the form is not, not um, really the, the essential part, you know, the, what, what the mediator is and what the mediator brings to the table um, is what, what uh, gets the solution, the, the, real, the resolution, uh, the positive resolution to, to, to an unfavorable situation. Um, and um, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's made, this case has really made me think, um, you know how how we can we can improve the skills and and get these um, you know natural born mediators um, um, all throughout the world 
to to garner their skills so that they are able to to um, solve and prevent and resolve such such conflict throughout the world. This is that's exactly what I'm working on now. That is the aspect of identifying and bringing them into the fold because the user experience is guaranteed. And because they are already trusted, they know what they're doing. They, you know, I mean, theory is something which they can, like I said, they can develop their skills, but the basic, the basic seed is there. So just have to get those people into the fold. Because I'm telling you the way when I, the symposium and op has, of course, made me dig deeper into the, even the US, which I've, of course, I'll speak to you about because of the court aspect of it, if what experience you had if you went and looked at the court system. But there is there are issues that I felt which don't come out on the front if you dig a little deeper. So Jeff Kichavin had, has, was speaking about his experience in the court system, which, is a, which I've, of course, you can tell me what your experience was. He said he was part of the court system, used to volunteer as a mediator there. Mm -hmm. So people were taking his time and he, the whole idea of people who come into the court system as mediators is thinking that they will be recognized by lawyers because all the lawyer driven thing mm -hmm. mediation there. So they will be recognized, they'll get private work, doesn't happen. So he's spoken about it. It was some, there was some Beverly Hills Bar, Bar Association thing. That webinar is up there. Well, there's on my playlist also over there. So he's speaking about the fact that a whole lot comes in. They think they'll be recognized. They get discouraged. They move out. A new lot comes in. At the end of the day, the mediator gets nothing, but the lawyers obviously are happy because they are their fees is their fees. So I so that was a fundamental issue which I've been talking about always that this is an issue that we are facing. That the court system for me is the worst thing that has happened for the profession. The self interest of the courts, okay, they want the backlog to go. That's their problem. They are inefficient. They have to get the efficiency right. But for me today, the whole target is how can we develop the profession so that the livelihood that a person needs. To do the larger things because we look still whatever you might say they are special people mediators want to do larger good but the basics have to be taken care of so that is the focus area so from the the court system look i have a problem with i, I have according to me courts and mediation are totally different areas north pole south pole situation they should have not no business to be in part of it for but they have become part of it and that's the way it happened so that's where i give the example of the us that court system is where it developed from but the, at the end of the day, after 40, 45 years, we have 100 million cases which are in court, go, go to courts. Why have the, has the user experience been that bad that they do not have not developed it? For me, like I said, if I get a matter, I get 10 matters from the same company after that resolution. So there is a good user experience. That is why they comes. The, and one party appoints me, I want, the other party accepts me. Then the other party like, like gets a good user experience. They want me in other matters. So in 40, 45 years, that should have happened as a major chain in the US. So that part of it, I think if you've studied that or looked at it, you can give me some observations on that. So because I feel there is a mismatch in what people's understanding of what's happening in the US. And when I dig a little deeper, I feel I find a little different thing. So please, if you have some observation on that. Well, I think what functions in the US um, uh, much better in different systems um, is practically that, um, you know, various agreements, whether it be related to um, insurance or, um, you know, being part of a strata in a neighborhood um, or, um, um, yeah, just uh, functioning uh, mediation clauses um, uh, already um, get many uh, disputes into mediation prior to the judicial process. For sure, it is a litigious society, and for sure, you know, uh, the, the costs of litigation in the US, um, you know, um, also form the way <laughs> um, uh, the the amount um, and and the way that that um, that uh, mediation and and um, judicial proceedings you know live side by side. But I think uh, a, a great amount of um, success that we have um, in the mediation field is because of these um, uh, the agreements that have been put in place and that are functioning. Um, um, in, in the society. So, uh, for example, in other countries, um, I think the insurance companies don't have such um, functioning mediation clauses that really, you know, uh, get out um, uh, any um, insurance related um, uh, case uh, to a private mediator. And I mean, this is, I think, 
one of the ways that you can develop private mediation and and uh, alleviate the the courts from from the increased um, 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 incoming of cases. Um, so functioning dispute resolution clauses not just between you know two parties. B2B, like functioning between themselves, but uh, big multifunctional um, or multi party agreements. Um, uh, and I mean, this is uh, a big part of also JAM's work. Um, uh, I mean, where they, they get um, how mediation comes to them. Um, I mean, how mediation cases come to them. Often there's um, several different agreements and some call for arbitration, some call for mediation, and then something related also ends up in court and then is really, um, really, um, uh, you know, the court uh, stays the proceeding uh, because of the parallel, um, you know, uh, mediation and uh, arbitration proceedings. And then, uh, you know, a, a different case that I, I had a, um, a possibility to shadow was precisely this, that practically then the mediation um, took place and prevented an arbitration dispute and, um, and uh, uh, a judicial one uh, on related matters also um, a housing issue. Um, so I think uh, the way, I mean, there is not one way forward. And of course we cannot uh, draw, you know, absolute parallels from any, uh, you know, different ju jurisdiction bring, bring completely their results into, into our own. But um, I think the, the joint, um, the underlying uh, note that I see um, uh, is that um, more and more private mediation should be harnessed, um, whether through the law, so um, you know, uh, legal triggers, um, uh, for example, through this, um, let's call it the, uh, the, the opt-out um, Italian model, um, to give a mediation a chance through an information session before, um, before um, you know, going actually initiating a court proceeding um, or uh, practically to have more um, uh, ingrained into society um, um, agreements which really channel um, channel parties to private mediation um, whether through these insurance uh, major insurance contracts whether through um, you know any any multi-party contract that might arise in a, in a society and lawyers play a huge role in this because they're the ones that draft these, um, these contracts. Um, and of course, the bottom line is that these contracts have to be enforceable um, in the sense that, you know, once it comes to, to a dispute, um, you know, if you have a mediation clause, um, it cannot be disrespected in the court. So a, a court proceeding cannot really be initiated until um, mediation is given a chance. Well, the thing is that in the court system, the thing in mediation is spoken about, mediation people get to know about. The, my focus is the mediator. The mediator is for some reason not, that profession for him is not taking, that's not developing. Over the years also, if I look at various, like in UK, Andrew Miller was there in the symposium. He said the 18,000 people certified there. Only 500 have worked. Coming from a senior mediator like him, I will take his word because obviously he has that experience. So there is a fundamental issue somewhere which needs to be resolved. One is, like I said, the right people may not be coming in. So why should people go for mediation if they're not getting a good user experience? Why I can't? You can't force them to do it. Obviously not. So if the user experience is not good, why is it not good? Because if the, the, every the profession works by word of mouth. So that means there must have been some fundamental issue somewhere. So yeah, I think you have to go to the, I think the root of the problem, because I was talking about Jeff Kitcher when the, the, I mean, the kind of, you get a nominal amount from the courts. So that can't, you can't survive on that. No. And he said, the, he was telling the lawyers who used to come for taking his time that he had given to the court. He says, what about otherwise? He said, you've given your free time. I mean, that's not free. That time will take that. Why have you given that time? So they do not want to take it beyond that. So the mediator is getting lost and we need to develop. I need to, I mean, you also definitely are looking at the mediator finally being recognized. First of all, like you were saying, being recognized in society as at the same level kind of thing. Because in the lecture that Mr. Akesanya for Nigeria gave, he was talking about this. He said, when I walk into a court as a mediator, 
and a lawyer walks in with his robe and wig, the different at different levels, people treat them differently. The lawyers treat it in a different manner, and yeah. So my something? question to you is, uh, who is a mediator? You know, um, you know, if if let's say the law doesn't regulate it, or if you don't accept some international regulation, you know, anybody can be called a mediator, and in that sense, that's where um, we have a problem because then people can associate mediation and mediators with something that is not necessarily um, up to the level of uh, professionalism that that you would want to associate with. Um, And that's, I think, where um, institutions um, like IMI come in, uh, which which garner international knowledge and um, and um, um, thought leadership um, in devising a certain way of, um, of recognizing who, who is in what category or who is who has come um, to what um, skill set um, uh, any and, and, and who can practically help parties resolve a dispute in, in the best way. My, my way of looking at it is that the people who have that mediator mindset you don't have to even call yourself a mediator the person who has the mediator mindset is already recognized by people around them they're already doing it it's not that they're not doing it they trust they're trusted also because every community it's not that everyone goes to everyone it doesn't happen that way people have been identified in villages i've sent someone out in some villages in india and they already i mean just asking them immediately the names were there there are such few people so it's something which is has to be recognized by people by themselves. It's not something that, look, skill development certifications will happen to a certain category of people. Look at the numbers involved. 1.3 billion people in India itself. To even reach that level where we can actually say that person in the village, you're going to do that. I'm saying there's a small category of people which like jams also. In the entire year handles only 18,000 matters. Only 18,000. I'll show you this particular Pranjal Sinha was one of the fellows. And he and this Akshata Ashok, they co-founded something called Sama. Let me just show you, you'll be, surprised. You'll be shocked at the number of what their figures are. You, I mean, it's amazing that if you just read it, I don't even tell you. This is the number, this is their website. 19 million cases handled. Oh. Okay. No, 190,000. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I what know. kind of cases those are. You know, that's, that's they're very small interesting. Also. No, no, they're small also. Interesting. They're, yeah, they're, that's they're small maybe also. consumer disputes. All kinds, all um, kinds, all kinds. No, I'm just saying not that. I'm just saying the one platform. This is one platform these guys have created only now. It is what they graduated, I think, two years back from they, they did their law. They just created this platform. And this is the numbers that you get. There is, I mean, there's so much that will happen and there's so many people will be getting into it. So to say that I hope that this is the way they have to be certified or whatever, there will be IMI will have its requirement. I'm not saying that look, IMI doesn't go away, but I'm just saying let the let that be something that quality should show and people should recognize it. That okay, this is what I need because the IMI certification gives me that kind of person. So it's not the reverse that I must use an IMI certified person because I will be guaranteed a good experience. I don't so I'm saying I get a good user experience and that is an IMI certified person. And then the word spreads that IMI certification is a good thing. I want it to work well, the other way because countries, <laughs> that countries. is precisely that is precisely uh, what IMI certification affords. You cannot you cannot be IMI certified if you don't have user feedback. No, then, no, perfect. I understand that. No, I'm, 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 that, I'm not. I'm not I, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the beauty yeah. of it. You cannot be IMI certified if you do not have user feedback, yeah. positive user feedback. Yeah. No, no, uh, and and that's the difference between IMI qualified, that is somebody who is just on the outset of their career as a mediator has just been trained, um, as opposed to you know IMI certified who has done the mediations and you know thought about them and and improved their skill set and has um has been able to demonstrate um at least five um you know really successful uh cases uh to behind their belt and um and practically uh, yeah ha- i mean ha- has um, at least 20 mediations so um it's i mean i'm very 
interested to learn more about this platform you have shown, but um, practically, uh, you know, I, my um, uh, user feedback um, and, and logbook uh, allows mediators to, to uh, track their, their record um, and, um, and, um, and in the end, um, practically um, allow them to, to, to get this recognition going forward through the success that they have had in the past. I think I think what maybe I don't know I haven't looked at what how we go about it I think the user also rates them so it's like finally the user is the one who decides who the how, what, what the user experience is so they rate that but I was trying to show you that the numbers involved are so huge that to actually get to the numbers that we need in terms of the mediators but how many certified mediators are there in IMI how many certified um around three or four hundred certified that's it that's small. That's a small number because I'm mean, like I said, the number of I mean, okay, India is just the number of cases that go into courts is only 18 million. I'm saying only 18 million, but so there is some report which talks about that this might be only five percent of the total disputes out there. So can you imagine how many disputes obviously are there? So then, yeah. But that is, that is the goal and and uh, and uh, point of international certification. But also uh, having an international pathway uh, to certification because um, uh, you know of course there's a lot more IMI qualified. Of course, the pool of people that have been even trained by IMI recognized. Um, institutions is even greater, but uh, it's really a question of who is practicing and the logbook and the feedback back, uh, form allow practically the, both the mediators um, and the users to track, um, you know, who is really doing the good work. For a moment, I'm taking you out of the IMI seat. I'm taking you out there, out of that. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say that we, mm -hmm. because we have to reach out to the villages. I, have to, I will start from there because the problem is that in terms of their access to courts, it's you can't even understand how far away a high court could be from a particular village in one part of India. The high court could be a thousand kilometers away. The Supreme Court could be more than 2000 kilometers away. Yes. Can you imagine a person from a village to expect it to go to the Supreme Court for him? It's like unaccessible in a way. You can't even the traveling up and down can't happen. So I'm for me, I look, I'm just looking at that broad base there and how do we get the right people out from there? How do we get them into the fold? So I'm here talking to you from that perspective. I might you yes, you're there, but even as been part of Mediators Collective before she came into IMI. So let's just look at it, go backwards. And that so the larger picture there is what I was trying to paint for yeah. you. But we need to look at that part on the larger picture. Somewhere. Yeah, but certainly, I mean, uh, events like this uh, really, I think, help mediators, you know, uh, discern what is important to them, think about uh, some issues in a different way, perhaps. Uh, I mean, the symposium you have organized, um, uh, work that IMI does through the information hub, um, I mean, the various, you know, online um, training plat platforms that exist and the continuous, um, you know, garnering of of um, of you know knowledge in this uh, in this um, um, in this profession um, should should help these mediators on field um, be more confident and and uh, ready to take on these cases and like Sukhsimranjit Singh said we have to make it cool so how do we make it cool is also what we have to think about I think we'll have to create a certain kind of uh, something for the younger people to take with them and how it is cool to mediate and not to, it has to be uh, in an app <laughs> yes yeah exactly and there are i think i don't know i mean whom are we really targeting how young do we go one is of course as i said in schools they're already there i'm i'm talking to children in schools and i know that they're all there they're doing it everything to get them interested and doing it within themselves it's the dispute resolution i want them to do not just talk about mm -hmm. conflict management so yeah. that part of it is a separate aspect. Yes, do that. Like I said, I was telling you, I think I told you last time also when I met you that it is that aspect of actually being able to resolve a dispute within themselves, get that feeling, get mm -hmm. a flavor of that, taste that, and then take it forward with you. So yeah. I'm focusing only on that part, yes. But we have to make yeah. it cool. Cool is what we have to do. 
Well, it it takes two to tango, but three is a party. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So something like that. Yes, but the only thing is that now we've moved away from the. Of course, it was just lovely talking to you. So we've moved into larger areas. But on the Jams Fellowship, if you want to take us more into anything there or whatever, I mean, concluding remark. I would. I want. I want to conclude this actually is because a two-hour session. Because now it's, it's about two hours. So when people see a video, two-hour video, they say, "Okay, we'll watch yeah. it later." I don't want them to watch it later. I want them to watch it now. So that is what's happened. And this actually started with one particular episode of Evolution of a Mediator, which went on for four hours without a break. So then people <laughs> that kind is too of, long. It no, is... keep it short and simple. Um, apply, apply, apply. Do not hesitate. Uh, put that pen onto the paper and um, and you know work on the project some something good will come out of it that is my last no no last that's not the last the last is one memorable real memorable experience from the entire fellowship the one one that you will all have always taken back and said yes that is the most memorable one um i would say you know the first time i heard judge danny recite rumi It's it 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 was it was in um in his mediation center in Napa, um and I will never forget. I mean the tone of his voice, his presence, um his yeah, just the energy that he filled the room and and how what. He, yeah, I think what what the soul that he <laughs> left um, with us on that day, um, and I and I come to that quote very often. Um, that is definitely the most memorable um, memorable. Wait, what is the quote? Part. What is the quote? Um, so? There is a field, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, outside of the of the um, uh, wrongdoings, right doings, there is a field, I'll, I'll meet you there. Yeah, yeah um, something else, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, beyond right and wrong, something else. Yes, yes. there is a field. Yes. I've actually done a little Google search, fast, fast Google search on that. Yes. Out beyond the ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, I will meet you there. It's the world full of things to talk about. Exactly. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. Exactly. Well, no, I think what I need to do is I have to send, I'll send a mail out to, because I've never tried to contact Judge Weinstein. I should, I'll send out a mail to him saying one, he should give it, if he can come on this mediated experience and talk about why this fellowship and all that. And I should get him on that evolution of a mediator also. So let me send you out. Have a, to. Yeah, I have you to have send to. That <laughs> like I was telling you, every, all these connections were made through LinkedIn. So, and I, I think I must have seen, I don't think he's very, very active on LinkedIn as I see. So I think I'll have to find his email from the Jams Foundation yeah. website and I think I'll send that to him. Yeah, I think. So thank you very much, Ivana. Am I getting it right? Ivana it was is a pleasure. I'm getting that right name. Thank you very much. It's been it was wonderful talking to you. No, it was wonderful talking to you and these conversations are going to go on. So it's not going to stop. So let me just cut the live stream. Keep up the stage. amazing work, Vikram. It was, ama 